fine. Uh, yesterday we have discussed a topic which is called as micturition. Hope you all understood uh, the topic which is called as the micturition. So today we are going to see some more uh, things about the urine and all. So you know what is this urine, right? So what is its composition? That is what we are going to study today. What is urine, right? So now we are also going to see urine and its composition and its composition. So basically this urine is a transparent liquid. It's a transparent liquid. Okay. It's a transparent liquid. And second one is that this urine is like, no, if you see the color of the urine, that is amber color. It is in the color of the amber color. And whereas now this amber color is due to the presence of a pigment which is called as the urochrome. It's called as the urochrome. So urochrome is present in the urine and that is the reason why the urine is usually amber colored. Okay. So now here, <clears throat> when you come to the composition of the urine, the basically the composition of the urine, when you see the composition of the urine, the, like no, it's not the same in each and every organism, right? So the composition usually varies from one person to the other person. It always depends upon the kind of things you intake, the kind of things you take as nutrients, like no vitamins or what are the foods you take, you know, like it depends upon that. So basically, if a person is taking a very, very rich protein diet, if a person is taking very rich protein diet, so when the urine is checked in the laboratory, it has urea in very good quantity, right? It has urea, like no, there's a excess amount of urea present in the urine because what are the nitrogen waste are there in the protein and all they will convert to urea and that urea will be more in the urine right and whereas when a person like you no know, when uh, uh, he is eating a lot of carbohydrates and all though so the amount of carbon dioxide you know, that will convert into glucose it will get digested into glucose and that glucose will be like you no know, whatever the sufficient glucose there that will go to each and every part of the body and the extra glucose also will convert to glycogen and stored in the parts of the body and whereas the ex is still if there is an excess amount of the glucose and all no that will come out with the along with the urine so when this urine is tested it will have the excess amount of glucose right so now here now this presence of glucose is not the diabetes right the regular presence of the glucose like no in the urine no that that is nothing but the diabetes right diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus. So these are the two things like no, we will discuss it later. So diabetes you now basically when you say uh, it is the nothing but the having the very good amount of uh, glucose which in the urine. So that is one of the things which you have to do. So children when uh, there is excess amount of glucose in the urine. So basically when it is tested if it is more than what it should be there in the urine right actually there should be no uh, there should not be uh, glucose in the urine but sometimes so like the glucose will be in the urine and that will have uh, like no for a prolonged period of time if it is still there in the urine that means the person is suffering from diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is having the sugar or glucose in the urine because whenever there is excess amount of water like no, uh, whenever there is excess amount of the glucose in the body, that should be converted, right? That should be converted to glycogen with the action of pancreas. Pancreas will secrete a hormone which is called as the insulin, and that insulin will convert the glucose into glycogen and store it in the body. But whereas when this particular glycogen uh, insulin is deficient or if it is not properly produced by the pancreas, then what happens is this glucose is now in the blood that will not be converted so it will be excreted along with the urine and this condition is called as the diabetes mellitus and whereas now there is a, another hormone which is secreted by the adrenal gland which is called as the vasopressin it's called as the vasopressin and if even this vasopressin also like you no, know, if it is uh, not present in the kidneys and all that will actually dilute that will actually concentrate the urine the urine is concentrated because of the action of the vasopressin but if the vasopressin is not there in the body if the vasopressin is in 
like you know, if it is producing a very very less amount, then the urination will be very high. That means the urine will be completely in the diluted state. Even sometimes, you know, people will pass around 15 liters of urine per day. Basically, it should be around, it should be under 2 liters of urine per day. That is 1 to 1.5 to 1.8 liters per day. But whereas, when there is uh, like no, uh, the vasopressin is not properly secreted, then the urine will get diluted. Okay. And actually that should be considered because of the action of the vasopressin. But now because of the lack of vasopressin, the diluted uh, water, whatever it is there, that will be easily sent out as urine and around it will be 15 liters per day. The person will excrete around 15 liters per day. And this problem is called as the diabetes insipidus. It's called as the diabetes insipidus. So, diabetes mellitus, excess glucose. Diabetes uh, insipidus, excess water. So, now, apart from this, if a person is drinking a lot of water, if a person is drinking a lot of water, then also what happens here is, the what the amount of uh, urine which is excreted, I should know, it should be around 1.8 liters per day. But now that will be a bit excess because of uh, the person is consuming extra amount of water you can say excess amount of water that is the reason why even the water content in the urine will also be very high so that's how the composition of the urine might differ from one person to the other person sometimes urea will be high because of the intake of excess amount of proteins sometimes the glucose levels will be high because of the excess amount of intake of glucose or uh, carbohydrate food and all and uh, sometimes like no the intake of water will be very high because the person will consume a lot of large amount of water so because of all these things and all you know, like there will be a difference like no the composition of the urine will differ it will not be constant if it will not be constant it will not be same in every person and all okay now from 100 percent 96 percent how much percent here children 96 percent of urine is water so how much is left now hardly 4 percent is left out of that 2.5 percent is organic substances they are the organic substances so what are the organic substances present here you can take the urea uric acid creatinine amino acids glucose okay so now these are all the uh, uh, along with the water so all these are the organics uh, what is not an organic substance but i have just written here so these are the different organic substances which are produced in the body okay apart from that even the vitamins which are also exist okay even that are also secreted outside so like this there are different organic substances that is around 2.5 percent of the organic substances are secreted okay from the urine right and also what is the what is the rest which is remained here 1.5 percent is remained right so as the 1.5 percent is remained so this 1.5 percent is sodium chlorides iodine okay and then uh, magnesium calcium and etc so these are all the inorganic things inorganic substances all the inorganic substances okay you can take the sulfates also right and here you can take the hormones so all these are the organic substances which are see which are there in the urine right they are around 2.5 percent and rest of the 1.4 sorry i mean uh, yeah 1.5 percent is sodium chlorides iodine magnesium calcium and also sulfates and water so all these are the inorganic substances which are there in the urine so this is the basic composition of the urine so this composition will usually differ because whenever there is excess amount of glucose is intaken so that will come out to the urine if excess amount of proteins are taken that will come out as the urea so like this they may differ if excess amount of water is taken the water content in the urine will be very high so on instead of 96 percent it will be a bit more so that is how you can talk about the urine 
composition. So now here basically we can understand one thing children here, right? Basically one thing we can understand here that urine is produced, urine is produced by the person so that whatever the poisonous substances which are there in the body or what are the waste substances are there in the body that should be removed outside. Because if those are not removed outside, then what happens? Then they will become poisonous and as they stay in the body, they will become poisonous and that will lead to the death of the person. So that's the reason why they should be immediately removed. So who is removing them? The only one part which is very, very important here, which is removing them is the kidney. Okay, so kidneys will play a major role in removing the waste materials from the body. So whatever the waste materials are, whatever the excess materials are there, along with the excess amount of water, along with the excess amount of urea, uric acid, creatinine, magnesium, calcium, like you no know, sulfur, sulfates, iodine, so what not. All these should be removed from the body. So as these should be removed from the body, so who are helping us? The kidneys are helping us. Sometimes, sorry, sometimes when these two kidneys like you no, know, when they are not able to perform their functions, that means if they fail to perform their function, okay, that condition is called as the ESRD. ESRD. That means these two kidneys which are here, like you no, know, they will fail. They will fail to perform, and that condition is called as the ESRD. ESRD in the sense end stage. Renal disease, what is called as end stage renal disease. So, when this will happen, when this happens, what happens here is all these materials which are to be excreted outside, all these materials which are to be excreted outside, they will remain in the body, they will become poisonous, and that will lead to the death of the person. That is what is going to happen if all these poisonous substances are there in the body. Now, what should be done if the both kidneys are completely damaged or completely spoiled and completely like no, they cannot perform any kind of action. So ultimately that will lead to the death of the person. So if any person is suffering from ESRD that is end stage renal disease, there is a process available for them which will make them survive. Okay. So now we are going to see what is the process and uh, how is the process done. Okay, children. So we will now switch to the topic which is dialysis. Children, now we are seeing the end stage renal disease. End stage renal disease, and this is the condition where the two kidneys will stop working and they will stop performing and they will stop removing all the waste materials from the body, waste products from the body. And that stage is called as the end stage renal disease. In this stage, you know, as the water accumulation is more in the body. Okay, the hands may swell and also the feet may swell and this condition is called as the uremia. This condition is called as the uremia. So, at this condition, what can be done is a process called as dialysis can be done. So, now we are going to talk about the process which is called as the dialysis. Okay, so now this is a very very important part of the lesson. So, I want everybody to concentrate while I am telling you about the dialysis, okay? Now this is a 4 marks question. It's a 4 mark question which may come in the examinations and also we should be very very careful while uh, going ahead with this topic which is called as the dialysis, right? So, so basically we can say that kidneys are the vital organs of the body. They are very very important organs of the body. Now if they perform, if they perform then all the waste materials from our body will be definitely like no, they will be clear from our body, they will be centered from, from our body and our body will become clean, right? Our blood will be absolutely clean. But in case if the both kidneys fail to perform, right? If they don't perform well and if they uh, like no, they don't do the work which they are given, so then that will lead to a definitely a great problem here. So now what is the problem? The waste metals will accumulate in the body and that will become toxic and that will lead to the death of the person too. So to save the person from this particular condition, we have a stage which is, which we have a process which is called as the dialysis. And this dialysis is also called as the artificial kidney. That means whatever the work which your kidney does, 
the machine which is called as the dialysis machine will do the same kind of work here now we have known that now here these are the vital organs of our body okay so without kidneys that will lead to the death of the person so there is a machine which is called as the dialysis machine which is used in the uh, hospitals and all like we'll see how this particular uh, uh, machine is there and how it is used and all we are going to see so children this is a basically a uh, kind of uh, dialysis machine which uh, looks like this so this is a dialysis machine where it's a mechanism of the dialysis machine and we are going to see what actually happens when you connect the dialysis machine to the person so here now what this dialysis machine will do is it will act as a kidney it will fill it it, it, it will filter the waste substances that is what uh, usually the dialysis machine will do so this dialysis machine you know, like this is used when both kidneys are completely damaged and they are not able to do any kind of work so this is a machine and here here like look you know, there are two nerves like uh, this is the right uh, side i'm taking here now this there is a main artery which is pumping the blood to different parts of the body and also be, just beside that there will be the main vein also there which will be bringing back the blood to the heart so what they usually do is they will connect the main artery here main artery here and what are the blood which is there in the body that will flow into the tube like structures here and then they will come to the red color tubes and know these are the channels of the tube like structures they will come into this and these tube like structures which are here they are the semi permeable membranes then so basically these are the semi permeable membranes so now here now the green one which you are looking here is the it is called as the dialyzer okay here you have the fresh dialyzer that will enter into the tube that will enter into this particular green parts and all so this dialyzer is very much equal to blood this dialyzer which is present in the dialysis machine is very much equal to the blood it is very much equal to the blood and except the fact that it doesn't have the nitrogenous waste okay our urine will contain the nitrogenous waste and they are really poisonous to our body but whereas in this dialyzer which is present here in between the all the green fluid you can see here and that will not have the that will not have what they will not have the nitrogenous waste here so what of the fluid which is present here like this it is called as the dialyzer it doesn't have any nitrogenous waste here now what happens here our blood our blood when when it comes like this it will be running through all these tubes and all so as they are running through these tubes and all which are connected to each other so what happens here is this particular now this what is running here blood is running here and now whatever the waste are which are there in the blood they are very free and they can easily freely move to one place to the other place and because this is made up of the semi permeable membrane they have some pores over here and whatever now here this one is very much equal to plasma very much equal to plasma and uh, only the fact is that it doesn't have the nitrogenous waste here so now here and also the blood cells and at this time what happens is whatever the nitrogenous waste are there in this particular channels like the blood which is passing through channels they will come into this dialyzer into this dialyzer so that is how what happens here is what are the waste materials are there in the blood they are immediately removed as they are passing through this channels okay the blood like you no know, will give out the nitrogenous waste into the dialyzer and whatever the dialyzer which is now full of the nitrogenous waste and all that will be at last collected into a other bottle so that is how all the nitrogenous waste are removed from our blood so this is the work which is done by the dialysis machine okay dialysis machine so this is how dialysis machine is working and that is used to remove the nitrogen waste and all the other waste from our body so that the blood will become clean here and then the same blood which is now clean will be transferred again to the vein into the vein here and that is how the vein again will send the body into the 
send the blood into the body. So this is how a dialysis machine will work. So this is only used when both the kidneys are completely damaged and they don't perform any action. Children, so hope you understood this one. Okay. And if you have any doubts in all, you can always uh, text to my personal number. I'll be there to answer each and every doubt. Okay, children. So this is the dialysing machine which is used for the dialysis. Okay. See you children uh, with the next topic. Until then, have a great day. God bless you. <music>